Six years ago, Mercedes-Benz made history when they introduced the sub $30,000 CLA class. Now, it was also meant to be the first ever front wheel drive vehicle that we've seen from the company. And unfortunately for Mercedes, the CLA didn't quite live up to being a cheap Mercedes without feeling like a cheap car itself, which is why I'm standing by the replacement for that vehicle. This is the all new 2019 a-Class, more specifically the base model, the A220, and with a starting price of around $32,500, it's still a really affordable car for the masses, but as you can see with its sleek new design, its really tech-filled environment, it really will erase all your bad thoughts about the old CLA class. So the big question I want to answer if you guys are looking to buy a Mercedes-Benz and don't want to spend too much money, should you put the new 2019 A-Class at the top of your list? That's what we're here to find out. Hey guys, before we get started with the video, I wanna do a quick shout out to the sponsor, Shine Armor. I actually use this product they call Fortify Quick Coat, which is a beefed up spray detailer to keep the cars looking really good in between the shots. So if you're interested in picking up one of these bottles, be sure to link, click on the link in the description below for a discount. So when you buy a car with the coveted three-pointed star, you're probably wondering what's going on underneath the hood. And 220 is not a displacement badge that we've seen in Mercedes, the Mercedes-Benz lineup in America. And what it basically means is you get a two liter turbocharged and direct injection a direct injected gasoline four cylinder. Now this does make about 20 less horsepower versus the old CLA 250 at 188 horsepower and 221 foot pounds of torque. Now again, a sub 200 horsepower doesn't sound all that impressive, but I'm gonna keep an open mind here because this car weighs uh, around 3,100 pounds. So it's a relatively light car. Front wheel drive, as you guys know, is gonna be standard uh, while formatic all wheel drive, which my tester has, is going to be optional. This one weighs around 3,400 pounds because it's got the all wheel drive system. Now keep in mind, this. CLA class is still coming back to America, but it's now going to be about $4,000 more expensive than this car, which will also include uh, a CLA 250, which has more horsepower. So this is kind of like a detuned version of that car. Now, if you guys don't want, or you guys want more power than this, there also will be the A35 and A45, the AMG versions with about 302 horsepower and up to 416 horsepower. So again, Mercedes-Benz, leave it to them to be super crazy with bonkers with AMG models. So I am looking forward to driving that. Now, because this is a small engine with relatively low power, it gets pretty good gas mileage. Uh, you're going to look at around 25 in the city, 33 on the highway for this one with all-wheel drive. The front drive model improves the MPG on the highway by about 1 MPG. You're going to get around 28 MPG combined. And the one thing you're going to notice, it is required to use premium gas. It all goes out through a new 7-speed dual-clutch transmission. Now, looking at the design of the all-new A-Class, you can see it shares a lot with the all-new CLS, which is kind of like the old CLA uh, class. It looks like a much more expensive Benz, but in a much smaller more compact package. I especially like the new front fascia that Mercedes-Benz is showing on all their latest products. And unlike the old CLA, which had halogen headlights, you're gonna get full LED headlights as standard. This one here has the upgraded LEDs where they will swivel in the direction that you're turning. And they're also automatic high beams. You'll have an LED daytime running light and an LED turn signal. My tester here also has an AMG sport package for $2,600. It basically gives you a unique grill, the unique black accents, the bigger air intakes here. It's definitely a very attractive looking sedan, but I do wish that Mercedes would include some some fog lights in here. You also have some well integrated parking sensors. Overall, I think this is a pretty attractive looking sedan. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the look for the all new A220. Now this is basically the same front wheel drive architecture from the old CLA. It's been updated, of course. Uh, it's been made a little bit stiffer, a little bit tighter. And when you look at the rest of the proportions, I love this particular color combination that Mercedes sent me with the polar white exterior, with the AMG night package styling, with the black um, mirror caps, the panoramic sunroof, which does come standard. And then of course, this one one has an optional 19 inch wheel uh, and an AMG 19 inch wheel wrapped in 225 with tires. They look fantastic with the white exterior. And you can, as you can see, when you guys get the AMG styling package, you also get the cross drilled rotors with the bigger brakes. So again, this is a small Benz, but it no longer really looks like a cheap Benz, but you have to also get the AMG styling package because without it, I think it looks a little bit weak. Now this is the smallest sedan in the Mercedes Benz lineup. Its wheelbase has been stretched by an inch versus the old CLA at 107.4 inches. So it's along the longer side and an overall length of around 179 inches long. This is about three inches shorter than the old CLA. Um, the new CLA is about five inches longer than this car. So again, this is a small car. It's about the same size as something like the new Toyota Corolla sedan or a Honda Civic sedan. Now, unlike the CLA, you can see the roof has a more traditional slope to it. So you have more space in the back seat, which I'll show you in just a moment. And then when you get to the back, there are some styling elements here that remind me kind of like a Kia 
or maybe like a, a Hyundai product. It looks a little bit too generic for my taste. If you guys want something that looks a little bit more distinctive, there is a new CLA 250 coming out for 2020, which of course I will show you guys later on. You can see my tester here, Formatic, so it's got the Formatic badge. It's got some nicely integrated exhaust back, uh, back here, but it's actually not connected to the actual pipe. There's a nice little rear diffuser here. And then the trunk capacity, Mercedes-Benz is confusing me with the trunk capacity because when you look at the trunk, it looks huge, but they say you only get around 8.6 cubic feet of space, which is weird to me because it looks more like 12 cubic feet. I mean, this does take up space in here, but maybe they're also changing the way they calculate um, volume in the trunk. If you look underneath the floorboard here, there is no spare tire. Instead, you just kind of get uh, a fix a flat kit and the seats do fold down in a 40-20-40 manner. So once you get past the exterior of the new A-Class, let's finally move into the interior and show you guys what the baby Benz is like. Now, when we first talk about the key fob, most of the Mercedes-Benz models nowadays will come with the company's smart key access system with push button start. You can see this particular one here is their newer key fob. So all you have to do is just approach the vehicle. And when you wanna lock the door, just touch the door handle right here. As you can see, that will lock the doors. The mirrors will electrically fold in. To unlock it, just touch the back of the door handle and that will unlock the door for you now. Looking at the interior of my particular test here, you can see this has the black MBTEX leatherette interior um, with the red contrasting stitching. You can see the steering wheel. This is the AMG specific steering wheel. And my tester is practically fully loaded. Um, it's got the big two 10.25 inch displays that are side by side to make basically one long LCD display. Uh, the MBTEX leatherette seats here, you can see they are a 10 way power adjustment with four-way power lumbar. They are only heated. My tester is missing the cooled function, but it does have the uh, kinetic seats. So these have the active kinetic seats, which I'll show you guys what that's like uh, later on in the test drive. You can see I also have the aluminum trim. You can also change this out to wood. Everything in here looks pretty um, classy. It looks really technologically focused, which is a huge improvement over the old CLA. This just feels like a much more expensive Mercedes-Benz. So it makes a really great first impression when you first get into this vehicle and open up the door. Now, stepping inside, the A-Class definitely has a low step in height. It feels relatively low and wide, which is good to making this thing feel a little bit more like a sporty car. Now, when you shut the door, it actually has a really solid sound. So that's a great first impression. Again, this is a European car. Build quality is always extremely high. Now, as you can see, look at that gauge display here. It shows the car right there with the headlights on when you first get in. And then when you wanna start the car up, just put your foot on the brake, push this button here to fire up the engine. You can see the headlights even do a little bit of a dance when you first turn these on. Um, these have the adaptive multi-beam LEDs where they will swivel in the direction of your turret. And you, as you can see here, holy crap, this interior really looks impressive at a glance. I mean, all the LED lighting in here, the two screens, the way the dash vents look, the instrument panel chime, the steering wheel, everything in here feels like you've bought the more expensive Mercedes models. It really does a good job of fooling you into thinking that you bought um, the way more expensive model. As you can see, my tester also has the heads-up display there for another thousand bucks. Definitely worth it. One of the better heads-up displays in the business. Now, it's a good thing that the A-Class has this really impressive array of tech, amazing design, because this design with all the lighting and everything in here is hiding materials that aren't quite the best in the segment for me, at least. The dashboard here is a soft touch injection molded plastic, but if you're looking for the MB Tech stitching in here, it's not available in the A-Class. The dashboard on this part here, you can see it is soft touch, but it has a relatively hard, cheaper finish to it with the you know perforations. I just expected this to be kind of a little bit softer, a little bit nicer. It's definitely hiding in, hiding some cheaper materials in here. Some of the, the way the dash feels also, it feels relatively solid, but I found that there is a little bit of creaking going on when you apply a little bit more pressure. The door panels here are also soft touch, but it's not super soft touch like what you'd get in the bigger Mercedes models. The seats, as you can see here, your three level heated seats are over there. If you had cooled seats, this is where the button would be. Um, some of the aluminum trim here is real, but some of it also feels a little bit more fake, but I believe this is real. This also is a nice padded perf um, suede area here where your elbows would rest. The windows are one touch for the front windows which are good, and they're also one touch for the rear windows. So again, it's one touch for all four. Really nice detail. Love the interior lighting there behind the door panels where you have an aluminum door handle. It is hard touch plastic down here. Kind of expected that though. At this price point, your trunk release is over there. Your headlight switch control is over there. The steering wheel also tilts and telescopes. 
Offers a really good amount of adjustability, which is fantastic. My tester also has the Burmester upgraded sound system for 900 bucks. It sounds pretty good. Not quite as good as the $6,000 Burmesters you'll find, of course, in the bigger uh, Mercedes-Benz models. Now, obviously, as you can see here, this has the new MB Tex infotainment system. The A-Class was the first Mercedes product in America to get the MB Tex infotainment system, which means you can control this 10.25 inch display, which by the way, is part of the premium package. If you guys don't get the premium package, you'll have a seven inch display here and a seven inch display here. The screen itself will look like this when it's off, but you'll have more of the unused real estate. So my recommendation, spend the $1,500 for the premium package and get the two screens because it looks incomplete without it. This just looks a lot more classy. The bigger Mercedes models have a bigger 12 inch display on both sides. So again, um, very much, most of the tech is here, just slightly downsized, of course, for the smaller Mercedes models. Now, of course, going to the home display here, this is your home display with MB UX. You can control this via a touch screen, or you can also use the little wheel over here, or you can also use the little touchpad over here. There's three different ways you can control this, and everything about it is class leading. It's very quick, it's very snappy. The graphics are beautiful. I mean, check out the navigation display. This has the augmented reality GPS, which I'll show you guys what that looks like when we go into the test drive. As you can see, we're coming up on evening here and it shows the night view. It's just fantastic. Love the MB UX. With the MB UX, you also get Apple CarPlay. This is not the wireless Apple CarPlay though. Um, so I'm surprised it's not the wireless Apple CarPlay and it's also not showing the bigger full screen when you guys have the bigger 12 inch display where it'll take up the entire 12 inches. This is actually taking up, it looks like only seven inches, which is kind of disappointing when you guys have the smaller system here, but it looks fantastic. The graphics are great. It's very snappy. As you can see, I'm running iOS 13. So this is the updated uh, Apple CarPlay interface where you know you have a little home screen here where you could customize this. And the one thing I love about this, let's say you've got the Waze up, but you wanna pull up your phone. Before, if you like started messing with your phone while uh, it was on the Apple CarPlay, it would actually make this go back to this home screen here. Now it's fixed that so when you, you can mess, mess with your phone like on Facebook and the GPS will not go away, which is a really great feature. So this again is nice. Wish Mercedes would have just thrown in the wireless Apple CarPlay. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see my tester has the parking assistance package. So it has the top down 360 camera and it'll parallel park itself and it's got parking sensors. Fantastic camera system. Some of the best in the industry, really looks expensive, really great quality. Mercedes is killing it with how much tech they're throwing uh, into this car for sure. Now going to the rest of the settings here, uh, if you guys go to comfort, let me first go to comfort. You can see this is where you can go to the active seat kinetics. Now this is not the massaging seats that you get in the bigger Mercedes models. Instead, what it does is when you turn the system on while you're driving or while you're sitting here, the system will kind of move the seat around like ever so slightly, like half an inch you know, up, half an inch back. It does that to kind of keep you alert and awake. At first I thought it was annoying, but as you sat there, you kind of you know feel it ever so slightly doing it. And it kind of does a good job of just kind of making you realize, oh yeah, the, the seat has this feature where it's making me you know, stay more alert while I'm driving. So it's kind of a gimmick, but the fact that it offers something like that in this segment is really a class exclusive feature. Now the interior color lighting, this is optional. This is part of the 64 interior color options that you can get for like 350 bucks or something like that. You can of course change the brightness if you'd like to adjust the brightness. Um, you can also adjust the color from the you know, preset different spectrums you have here. I have it on color mix. You can, so it'll constantly change the colors. Um, some of you may also really like the purple sky. When you go to the purple sky, you can see really cool. It's almost like a nightclub in here. It looks fantastic. But for demonstration purposes, I will probably leave it on the color mix, or you can also go to, some of you would really like the fire red, or they also have sun yellow, or if you those of you like green, they also have a jungle green color. It just looks really cool. Or you can kind of go to, um, uh, your own customized uh, color for whatever you, got, you would like to do. Now, going over here back to the home screen, you can see there's a bunch of dif different information sources. You can see, look at that representation of the car. Over there, you can see what your engine is producing in terms of horsepower, your coolant use. You can see your fuel consumption over here. I mean, everything about this car just looks really impressive. You can see this is where you'd access your driver assistance tech. To turn off the stability control, you have to go into uh, the actual screen. I couldn't find an actual button, which kind of annoyed me. Here's your driver assistance. My, my tester has the full suite of driver assistance, so this car will actually change lanes for you. Uh, I'll show you guys that when we're out in the test drive. And everything about it, just check this out. I mean, you can also adjust your drive mode selector over here. It's controlled from this little controller over here. 
Um, you can adjust the individual ones, but if you'd like, you can see there's between individual, comfort, sport, you know, I'll go over those um, later on in the test drive. Going back over here to the settings, let me see, I didn't miss anything. You can see you can change a lot of things. It's very overwhelming at first. And this is just the screen on this side. I haven't even begun to talk about this screen over here because this is customizable as well. So it's all controlled from this little touchpad here on the wheel. This is basically a touch sensitive pad where you can swipe your finger across just like on the other side. Push the home screen here, you can see you can cycle between your driver assistance, um, you can cycle between phone, navigation, trip, radio, media, and then design and displays. There's basically three different ones. There's classic, which looks like this, which I think looks pretty good. If you guys want the sport, which is what I had it on earlier, gotta go all the way back over here to settings or design and display. Oops. See, sometimes it doesn't always work as well as I'd like to. If you're going, if you're trying to go really fast, it will sometimes overshoot and miss. There's your sport display. And then when you want to go to just understated, you can see it completely like blacks everything out if you want to do understated. So really cool. Not really my favorite to, to go to the understated, but what I do like is when you go to like the nav, you know how Audis with the virtual cockpit, um, you can put the GPS in here. You can do that in Mercedes as well. And unlike the BMW's live cockpit professional, you can put it all to take the entire screen. So Mercedes is just right up there with Audi's virtual cockpit, although it's not quite as easy to use as the virtual cockpit. Um, but I will say that it is much more impressive when you do start using it. So that's something to uh, keep in mind. The rest of this interior, as you can see here, you've got dual zone climate control with actual hard buttons. The one thing I think is cool, when you start adjusting the temperature, this vent actually changes color. So like right now I have it synced. So if I start raising the driver's side, only that turns red. If I start raising the passenger side, only that turns red. Or if I lower it, it turns blue to show that it's getting colder. That's really cool, really great detail that I wasn't expecting. Your volume knob, you can see, is over here. You have actual hard buttons here for the Navi, for your radio, for your telephone. Um, this is a nice little area where you could rest your hand when you want to use the little touchpad over here. This over here show, opens up to show your glove compartment or your center console storage with two USB storage storages. The one thing about this car is everything is controlled or there are no actual regular USB ports. They all are USB-C ports. I actually had to go out and buy this cord here uh, for a USB-C to lightning. So that's something to keep in mind. Mercedes is very much staying ahead of the trends with the fact that everything in here is a USB-C port. The glove compartment you can see is actually a pretty good size. It's damped but not lined with felt. You can see it's nice and lit up in there. The seats, I find them to be very comfortable and supportive. Um, you can option on option in a higher, you know, real leather material. This is the MB uh, and BTEX with the suede Alcantara. And then of course this panoramic sunroof comes standard on this car. You can see it lets in a lot of light. It also opens if you'd like to open it completely. It opens up almost, or basically the entire way. It doesn't go completely to the back seat, but the fact that this pano sunroof is standard this year, whereas before on the old CLA, you had to pay like two grand extra to get that. Uh, Mercedes is throwing in a lot of uh, value here. You can see there is all LED lighting in the cabin. Uh, which makes the interior really bright in here for when I show you guys the night drive. So overall, this interior is fabulous. You know, the materials aren't the most high quality. They're not the best in the segment, but all the tech in here is so impressive and the lighting and just the ambiance, it really kind of makes you forget that the materials aren't quite as nice as like a C-Class, uh, for example, or, you know, the bigger Mercedes like an E-Class or an S-Class or an AMG GT, for example. So getting into the back seat of the A220, now remember the old CLA had that roof that really cut in so I had to duck my head. This one, it's not quite as bad and I'm noticing at 5'7", I have a lot more headroom versus the old CLA. But if you guys are over six feet, you should be able to still uh, fit back here. It's a relatively accommodating rear seat considering how small this car is. Now Mercedes says you get around 34 inches of legroom back here, which is not bad. There is a hump here that intrudes onto the middle passenger space a little bit. You do have two rear seat air vents back here. You have two USB-C ports, a little bit of storage over there. No separate climate control switches and whatnot. Remember, this is their least expensive model, but you do also have two map pockets. Now, over here in the center, the center of the vehicle, you do have a nice cup holder here with two armrests, which is nice, or two uh, cup holders, which is nice. And then above me, the panoramic sunroof doesn't quite come to the back seat, but it does let in some more light. And the materials back here are also soft touch, so they didn't skimp, which I believe on the old CLA, they included hard touch plastic materials. So usually I don't really get excited to drive the base lines of any luxury vehicle, but I have to say when I first saw the A-Class, I was really impressed with this car. So I was really excited that Mercedes finally dropped this thing off and you guys have been requesting me to drive this car nonstop. So without further ado, let's get on with the driving scene. Now um, I'm gonna do it in this setting where it's almost, it's about 6.35 right now. It's gonna be dark in about 30 minutes. So we're gonna go to dusk to, 
to dark, which is good. As you can see, the interior lighting is phenomenal in this car. It really adds to the whole premium ambiance. Now, the first thing I want to show you guys is the augmented reality in the GPS. So let's tell the GPS to take us somewhere. Hey, Mercedes. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help you? Navigate me to the organic butcher of McLean. I am starting route guidance to the organic butcher of McLean, 6,000. And it's amazing to me that she actually picked that up McLean. very quickly. She used the, the 4G LTE in this car basically to tell me exactly, or to search the web for that destination. And it just put it up really quick. That's one of the best systems that I've tried in any modern car today. So let's get going to the destination. Now, basically the way the augmented GPS works, when you have a location, you know, input into the GPS. It uses the camera that's right here to basically look ahead. It'll put the, what the camera sees into the GPS display and then it'll overlay um, street names, it'll overlay turns. And it does that as you approach, you know, whatever destination you need to, or whenever you approach a turn. Um, so right now it's not telling me to go in the direction that I want it to go. So we're going to ignore the GPS lady and we're gonna go this way and we're gonna have her recalculate. But once she recalculates, as you can see here, as I approach the next turn up ahead here to get on the interstate, you can see there it is. It posts the street names over the actual camera. This is amazing. I did not think that something like this would exist this quickly. And it's showing you that technology has really advanced very quickly over the years. And we're gonna be seeing this in more and more cars, but Mercedes was the first to do augmented reality GPS. And as you can also see, this car has a start stop feature, even in sport mode right now, as I come to a stop, the engine is turned off to save fuel. As I release the brake, it is pretty quick to restart. I do notice that the air conditioning will turn off um, or it doesn't blow as cold air uh, when the engine is off. As you can see there, it is relatively quick to start up, but you do feel a slight jolt uh, when your foot transitions from the brake to the accelerator pedal. Some of you may not like that, and you can just turn off the start stop from this button here that's right below the start stop button. As you can see here, as you approach this turn here to turn left, you can see it clearly displays the street name and it displays in the arrows, the three arrows, which direction you want us to turn. So obviously she wants us to go left. It's showing us there. This makes it so you don't miss turns on the GPS because sometimes the GPS can get confusing from looking at the map display. This makes it easy. So if you miss turns while using this, you're just oblivious and you're just not paying attention while you're driving. Now with only 188 horsepower, you probably aren't expecting too much in terms of acceleration. I certainly wasn't. Uh, this has about 20 less horsepower than the old CLA, but this engine, this two liter turbo engine is definitely one of those engines that fall under the surprising amount of power. When I put my foot down here, the dual clutch in this car is very quick to shift. And it has so much low end torque that you don't really find yourself wanting for power. The one thing that it does lack is the sound. This engine does not have a very good sound to it. It's just a unremarkable four cylinder. But you can see when I pull the paddles, the transmission, very responsive. It doesn't feel quite as snappy as the best that I felt from Porsche, uh, from Audis. But this is a huge improvement over the old seven speed that was in the previous generation CLA. That transmission was just very clunky. It was always confused. This is much better. So bravo to Mercedes for fixing the dual clutch in this vehicle. It's a perfect partner for this two liter uh, turbocharged engine. Hey Mercedes. How can I help you? Cancel route guidance. Route guidance canceled. And you can see this vehicle is also very good, or the MBUX is very good at just canceling route guidance when you want it to. Now, I wanna show you guys the adaptive cruise control in this car, the driver assistance tech. To turn it on, just hit the on off button over here and then just set it. And then you can see, just set the speed increments. You can change it up um, by five mile per hour increments with this little toggle on the wheel here. The driver assistance in this car is definitely one of the best that I've driven. It's right up there almost with Tesla and their autopilot. And the reason being is because Mercedes is the only other brand other than Tesla to offer automatic lane changes. No other brand besides Tesla does the automatic lane changing. And to activate it, all you have to do is just turn the system on with the adaptive cruise control. You can feel the lane keep is active right now. And whenever you wanna change lanes, all you have to do is just see either signal left or signal right and it'll automatically initiate a lane change. 
to demonstrate it, let me pass this slow moving Prius over here and we'll signal right. And it even tells you lane change to the right. All I have to do is just do a three blink. It'll automatically change lanes for me and it'll turn off the signal as long as you didn't do the full lane change. As you can see here, we're following this curve here. The car stays in the lane for the most part. It keeps you centered in the lane. And let's see here how it does over here as I come up to this area. I'll signal right again. It's gonna change, it even says lane change to the right. It could be a little bit faster. I find the Tesla system is a little bit quicker in that regard, but the fact that Mercedes-Benz offers this on their least expensive model, is just huge. It's just like, what's Volvo doing? What's BMW doing? What's Audi doing? I'm just surprised that no other brand has gone to offer this yet because this is kind of where I would like the industry to go. As you can see, when my hands aren't on the wheel, it starts to yell at me and it tells me to put my hands uh, back on the wheel. And when you start to look for passing power, you do feel that it is lacking a little bit in horsepower, but once the turbo kicks on, once the boost kicks in, this feels very quick. It feels like it'll get to 60 in around six and a half seconds, which is plenty of power for most. There are times where I was wanting for more power, but that's of course, you know, why the AMG 35, the AMG 45 exists. Now let's take this exit ramp here. Remember, this is a front wheel drive car, but Mine is all-wheel drive. It's got the Formatic all-wheel drive. There's a little bit of understeer, I feel, there, and the tires are squealing. But she grips really well. The suspension stays nice and firm. My tester does have the adaptive dampers. No aromatic suspension, but it does have adaptive dampers, so it does stiffen up the springs when I have it in sport mode here. And you can see the transmission does a good job of blipping, rev matching here when, you, uh, when it senses you're in a sportier, friskier driving attitude. But yeah, this car's chassis easily feels like it could handle more. I cannot wait to drive the AMG versions of this car. For a base engine, for a base car with a sport package, it is pretty incredible. All right, let's put our foot down here. Again, not really much in terms of a remarkable sound and the power tapers off above five grand. This transmission will shift around 6,200 RPM. But basically the AMG version, the 35 is coming with, you know, 302 horsepower. And then of course there's the 416 horsepower, 45. I cannot wait to drive those. This is going to be the most, you know, enough power for most, but you know, obviously for you enthusiasts, you are going to be waiting for the, uh, the AMG uh, versions of this car. Now, as it gets a little bit darker here, the headlights in this vehicle, they are adaptive. They swivel, they steer in the direction of my turn. Um, no fog lights on this car, but I found that the headlights work very well on this car. Um, they extend a very, they offer a really broad spectrum of light. You can see it really easily. The interior lighting in here is just incredible. The heads up display is crystal clear. Everything about this car just feels like the whole package. And really my tester is missing the cooled seats, uh, cooled seat option that I would like. But for their least expensive model, a lot of you are going to be really impressed with what this car has to offer. So one drive and you'll really enjoy you know, everything from the ride quality, which is really comfortable now. It's not harsh anymore. The steering has really good feel. It's very quick to respond. The engine has plenty of down low torque, but it does taper off at the higher ends. The transmission has been improved. So basically Mercedes went through all the checklists of my complaints of the old CLA and they basically put check, 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 and they've addressed a lot of the issues, but I am looking forward to driving the uh, AMG models in the future. So I was actually a fan of the original CLA 250 when I reviewed that car about four years ago, and it really only had two major flaws. The ride quality was a little bit harsh, and the dual clutch transmission was just confused, and it really had jerky shifts. And after driving or spending a week with the all new 2019 A220, I'm happy to report that Mercedes has addressed those two issues that I had with the original CLA. Its ride quality has been much improved, and the new dual clutch transmission also shifts a lot smoother. It doesn't quite have the quick shifts that I would prefer that you get in like an Audi product, but it does feel like a traditional automatic. And when you put it into sport mode, it does liven things up. Now, as you can see, the new A-Class definitely has a lot of the charismatic look and feel of the old CLA. Its design, as you can see, really still stands out. I especially love it with the AMG Sport package. Its interior has also been completely redone and it has a lot of excellent tech in it. The same tech that you're gonna find in the lot more expensive Mercedes models, like the dual screens, uh, the wireless charging, the heads up display, the heated and cooled seats, but it also doesn't feel quite as cheap as the old CLA. So even though the design looks a little bit more plain in the back, 
I think a lot of people are going to be really impressed with the interior, really impressed with the riding handling and the engine. Even though it has less power, it still actually has relatively good performance. Zero to 60 in around six and a half seconds is very uh, reasonable for a car that's a base model. And I think that once people start test driving this, once they start you know, seeing the kind of deals that Mercedes is gonna offer on it, they're gonna find a lot with the lot to like with the new A-Class. And really, it gets me excited to drive the A35 and the A45 AMG. And keep in mind, if you guys still want a CLA, because you want the coupe, coupe look, that also will be going on sale later this year with the same engine option. So with all that said, it's time to give the new A220 an RPM rating. Now, starting with the R for real world uses, this is a small sedan and interior space has been improved, but she ain't very roomy in the back seat really, or in the trunk. It's still a very cozy fit. So I'm gonna give this a six out of 10 points for real world usage. Moving on to the E for efficiency, rated at uh, 25 in the city, 33 on the highway, I got around um, almost 30 MPG. The EPA says you got around 28. It is relatively reasonable gas mileage because the vehicle is so lightweight, because it has an efficient engine, a good transmission. I'll give this a seven out of 10 points for efficiency. I'm docking it a little because you are required to put premium gas in this thing. Now, moving on to the D for desirability. A cheap, small Mercedes Benz typically isn't desirable, but when you get it with the right options like this one, it turned a lot of heads and it looks really good with the white with the black wheels. So I'm gonna give this also a seven out of 10 points for desirability. Now moving on to L for longevity. Mercedes-Benz definitely is not known for stellar reliability like you'd get in a Lexus product or an Acura product, but they are a little bit more reliable than some of the other German brands like um, Audi, like BMW. They're kind of more on the lines of Porsche. So I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10 points for uh, longevity and because I noticed the build quality of my tester is also really good considering this is their least expensive model. Now moving on to the I for innovation. This is where I'm going to give the A-Class more points because as you can see with that incredible interior, all the tech features with that insane driver assistance stuff, which is very much close to matching the best that you get from Tesla with their autopilot. I'm going to easily, easily give this car a nine out of 10 points for innovation, just because for their small sedan, packing it with their big features, uh, the features from their bigger sedans, they did a really good uh, job with that. Now moving on to the N for need for speed. This is the base model, zero to 60 in around six and a half seconds. I'm gonna give this a six out of 10 points for need for speed, just because I know there are AMG models coming, which should do zero to 60 in around four seconds, if you guys can wait for that. And then of course, last but not least, the last E for expense. This is where I'm gonna dock the uh, A-Class a little bit for points because this car does start at $32,500. However, this car here is $34,500 to start because it's the Formatic, so 2,000 for all-wheel drive. This is where things get silly because my tester here has an as-tested price of just under $50,000. That is just insane with all the options it has, which by the way, I have to pull out the Monroney because there's just so many freaking options. Now really, the AMG body package, so the sport package you see here, this is the most expensive option at $2,600. There's a premium package for $1,500 that gives you the two digital displays, the um, hands-free keyless intelligent access, the power folding mirrors. There's an exterior lighting package that gives you the adaptive headlights for $900. The multimedia package, which gives you the nav with the um, augmented reality, that's about $1,200. Uh, there's a night package for another $300. The parking assistance package that gives you the automatic parallel parking and the 360 camera, that's a thousand. And then of course the driver assistance package for $2,200 gives you all of the auto lane change, the automatic braking, the full speed range adaptive cruise. Now, my biggest problem where I'm knocking this for value is the fact that I have to pay an extra $850 for the adaptive damper suspension. I have to pay an extra $990 for the head up display, $500 extra for satellite radio, um, Five or eight hundred fifty dollars for the Burmester sound, five hundred eighty dollars for the heated front seats, three hundred dollars for the sixty-four interior ambient lighting, and then of course two hundred dollars for the wireless charging. Those features that I just mentioned, which are all a la carte, should be included in the premium package. And it's just adding more insult. And it's why this car is almost $50,000. So really, if Mercedes would just thrown that into the premium package, I would say this car, as it sits, is easily worth like forty-four, forty-five thousand dollars. But when it's close to fifty. You can get C-class money. You can go up a class above, and that's why I'm docking this thing for points. But other than that, I think it's a really great entry into the segment that really is starting to go stale. I mean, you've got the Acura ILX, the Audi A3, which are old. And then, of course, BMW has their two series, but they don't offer it yet in a four-door version. So that's why I'm giving the expense rating a six out of 10 points. Now, when you add it all up, you get 49 out of 70 points, which is actually on the higher end of the RPM scale. I actually rated it higher than the BMW 330i and the 
Volvo S60. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2019 Mercedes-Benz A224 Matic. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel. For all the latest reviews, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.